This SciShow video is sponsored by Helix Sleep, which makes premium mattresses that are customized to fit your needs. Click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash scishow for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress, plus two free pillows. Our microbiomes have become super famous in the last several years. We've learned that a world of tiny organisms living inside of us helps us digest food, produce vitamins, and regulate our immune system. But humans aren't the only life form playing host to entire ecosystems. Other animals have their own complex microbiomes, and amazingly, so do plants. And these tiny microbes may play a surprisingly large role in plants' survival and evolution. Plant microbiomes are partly made up of fungi and bacteria called endophytes, which live at least part of their lives inside plants. Unlike the microbes that cause mildew and root rot, these don't harm their hosts, so plants and endophytes get along just fine. In some cases, a plant and endophyte will spend their entire lives together, almost as if they were a single organism. For instance, obligate endophytes may actually start out in the seed of their host plant, along with all the genetic information for a new baby plant. So they're literally with their host plant before it even exists. Then as the seed grows into a plant, they feed on its nutrients and take in its water. The plant also protects them from dangerous UV light and extreme temperatures. And safe inside the plant, endophytes don't have to compete for resources with other microorganisms. All of this doesn't cost the plant much, so it continues to grow healthily. Meanwhile, the endophytes multiply and spread, colonizing the leaves and tips of the shoot where flowers will eventually bloom. That way, they get incorporated into the egg, then the embryo, and eventually a seed ready to start a new generation of plant microbe friendship. But not all endophytes spend their whole lives in a plant. Others can live on their own just fine, but they've evolved to thrive inside plants. These so-called facultative endophytes live outside of a plant for part of their life cycle, often in the soil or even in an insect. But they'll seize any opportunity to hop on board a plant. For instance, if they come into contact with the natural cracks in a plant's roots, they'll make their way in and colonize the whole thing. Meanwhile, passive endophytes never go looking to colonize a plant at all, but sometimes they'll still end up making a home there. Like if some bacteria and fungi in the soil encounter some open wounds on a plant's roots, they might just settle in. But since these microbes aren't specialized for living inside plants, they never actually become symbiotic. Endophytes don't just reap the benefits of living in a plant, though. Many actually give a lot back. Some of them secrete chemicals that protect a plant from herbivores and harmful invaders, because after all, the plant is their home, so it's in their best interest to protect it. Some endophytes also regulate their host plant's pores. For instance, when the weather is hot and dry, endophytes can help keep pores closed so the plant loses less water, protecting it from drought. These pores also let carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. Since these are the inputs and outputs of photosynthesis, regulating them can make a plant more efficient at converting sunlight into fuel. And finally, host plants can also count on certain endophytes to help them take in nutrients. When these microbes colonize a root system, they increase the root's surface area, which lets the plant take up more water and nutrients from the soil. Once inside, a plant, endophytes can also break down nitrogen in the air and turn it into other compounds the plant can use. On top of all that, some will secrete hormones that can make their host more efficient at absorbing nutrients. With all of these extra resources, a plant can grow bigger and produce more fruits and flowers that spread seeds. And sometimes the endophytes in a plant's seed might convert enough nitrogen into nutrients to help its host to sprout in the first place even in harsh conditions. So these tiny microbes can be incredibly important to plant survival. And plants and endophytes seem to have been working together for a long, long time. Fossil records suggest that fungi may have colonized the very first plants to live on land 400 million years ago. In fact, they might have actually helped plants evolve to survive here. A paper in 2003 found that there's at least one type of endophyte in every single plant species ever discovered. But they haven't just lived together all these years. It seems that plants and their endophytes have actually evolved together. What's amazing about that is that historically, scientists thought natural selection was pretty simple. Individual organisms with the best genes were the most likely to survive and pass on their DNA. And they thought this was what drove the evolution of a species. But when researchers discovered endophytes, they realized that may not be the whole story for plants. Now, scientists think that natural selection acts on a plant species plus its microbiome. So in survival of the fittest, fitness is determined by the genes of a plant and the genes of all the microbes that call that 
plant home. Almost as if the whole ecosystem were a single organism. At first, the relationship between a plant and an endophyte might seem like your run-of-the-mill symbiotic relationship, but plant microbiomes are incredibly complex, just like humans. And what we've learned so far shows that the relationship between plants and their microbes are profound. They may not affect just a single plant, but a species as a whole, which is a pretty major achievement for such a microscopic world. And just like microbes are unexpectedly important in a plant's life, your mattress may be unexpectedly important to your life. Which is why Helix customizes their mattresses and bedding to suit your particular sleep needs. To find the right fit for you, you can take their sleep quiz. Like, I prefer a firm mattress and sleep on my side, so they recommended their Helix Twilight mattress. And once you've found the right mattress for you, let Helix ship it to your door for free anywhere in the US. Then you get 100 nights to try it out in your home and make sure you like it. If you don't, they'll pick it up for you with a full refund. And if you do, you still get a 10-year warranty. When you're ready to buy, Helix makes it easy to pay with different financing options and flexible payment plans. And if you click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com scishow, you can get up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress, plus two free pillows. Thank you to Helix for supporting this SciShow video, and thank you for watching.